The last type of measures you can use to describe your data is the measures of position. These include standard scores, percentiles, deciles, and quantiles, and the main goal of these is to locate the relative position of a data value in the dataset. In this video, we will see the standard score. To a certain extent, standard scores, or z-scores, allow us to compare the proverbial apples to oranges. Here are the hypothetical 2012 revenues for the Lions and the Black Cat bookstore. We can certainly say that the Lions made more money than the Black Cat, but we cannot say that the Lions had a much better year than the Black Cat. These are two very different businesses with different merchandises, different customers, etc. As such, we can't compare them adequately, but we must compare their 2012 revenues with their respective means and standard deviations. This is where the z-score comes in. We obtain the z-score by subtracting the mean from the value and dividing the result by the standard deviation. Here is the formula for the z-score when the distribution we have is the sample. So first we have the z-score, which is symbolized by z. Then we have the value you wish to find the z-score for, the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation. And here is the formula when we are looking for a z-score in a population. The only difference here is in the symbology, indicating that we are using the population mean and the population standard deviation. As such, we can also say that the z-score tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean each value in our distribution is. Let's do an example. The lion's mean annual income is of $500,000 with a standard deviation of $25,000. So the z-score for 2012's annual income is $550,000 minus $500,000 divided by $25,000, giving us a z-score of two. So we can say that the revenue for 2012 is two standard deviations higher than our distribution mean. Now as for the black cat, using the same formula, but with of course the values referring to the black cat, we get to a z-score of 1.14. So even though both businesses actually had better than average years, the Lion's higher z-score allows us to state that it has indeed had a better year than the black cat. Because we are subtracting the mean from the value, it is possible to obtain a negative z-score. Let's redo the example with different years to see how we would interpret negative z-score results. With an annual income of $475,000, the Lions had a lower than average year. As such, the resulting z-score is negative at minus one. So the black cat also had a lower than average year with a resulting z-score of minus 0.14. Because minus 0.14 is actually larger than minus one, we can state that even though both businesses had lower than average years, the black cat had a better year than the lions. We will be seeing a lot more of the z-score in following videos.